Hey, hey, my creative friends. It is time to talk creativity. Um, today, I am celebrating. I am celebrating because this is 100 days of videos every day. I didn't actually think I could do it. I kind of haven't put it on more social. I mean, I just really haven't put it out there because I thought, oh, what if I like tell people I'm doing this and then I don't do it? So I'm kind of excited now I feel like I'm in a groove that I can do and so I'm celebrating so in celebration I wanted to get you and show you what hi Trisha I wanted to show you princess cake now princess cake is supposed to be <laughs> look at this this was in Joseph's backpack <laughs> so in his backpack he carried it it's a little rough <laughs> So anyways, and this is not the real princess cake. I mean, it is, but they have like a spring green, kind of a lime green um, fondant that goes over this. And of course, today, I've seen it every single day I've been here in Sweden all over the place. Today, they didn't have any. And I don't know why it's blue. I think there's probably something going on because I remember at Halloween, they had orange. So I think something's going on and um, they changed it to blue, but I don't know. But it has, and the story is, is that the, there were three princesses that, in the royal family of Sweden, and the gal that took care of them and taught them how to cook um, made this cake where you take the sponge cake and then you take a layer of, of raspberry jam and then another sponge cake layer, then a custard layer, then a sponge cake, and then a big old fat cream layer. And then you, um, covered up with the fondant and you make it this dome this dome shape they used to call it green cake because it was it had always been green and this is, has to be like I think a hundred years old this tradition and but now they call it princess cake and everybody assumes because it came out in a cookbook that had a picture of the three the that the gal who taught the princesses had a cookbook and it had the picture of the three princesses on the front just started calling it princess cake and it, everybody knows about princess cake here. It's kind of a thing. And so they also have different versions and this happens to be mine. It is chocolate and mousse, chocolate mousse and cream. Love it. So anyway, so I'm celebrating today and we've changed our rooms. You are up in my, in my private room, <laughs> in my only, my, my own space room. Downstairs um, is is like the office space stuff and it's in the living room and so I share that. But this room is just, can't you tell? <laughs> so um, I, that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna talk about um, homes and celebrating and just some different things. <clears throat> so I remember when I first got married, um, I realized I knew what a clean home looked like but I didn't know how to keep a home clean consistently. I, I mean, I knew what, but I mean, my mom was a single mom. She worked all the time. We didn't have much money and it was just, it was just, um, you, you, you can imagine what it's like being a single mom with two kids and, you know, putting out your energy at, and then trying to keep your house clean and stuff like that. So I knew how to clean. I just didn't know how to do it consistently. And so when I got married, guess what? Cleaning was not my priority <laughs> and I just didn't know how to do it. So what I decided to do was to get some homemaking books on how to, you know, have a home, keep a home. And this is 30 plus years ago because we've been married 37 years. And so this was over 30 years ago. So it talked about different things. And I remember two things out of this book distinctly, that if your house is a wreck, just like a wreck, things everywhere. Just take everything and put it in trash bags. Just put it all in trash bags and set it someplace away in a closet. I think she said in a closet. And um, I thought that was interesting. And she said, you can go through the bags later. And I thought that was interesting because what she was doing was removing the visual clutter, removing it so you didn't see it because to me, the places I've been and I've seen or I've lived in or whatever, it becomes a burden. It kind of is heavy. You don't feel um, 
lights. And so that was one of the things she said. And the other thing she said was have one special place that's clean. And she like suggested a table. And that has stuck with me because when I have eight kids, nine kids, I, I could not, we could not keep the house clean like a showroom. It just, it wasn't going to happen. Simply not. And it wasn't my priority. And so there were certain things that had to happen. The living room had to be picked up. And usually I had a place in the home where I, I did something that made it special to me. Um, so there are a, a quote here, it says, um, about this woman who, in the book Joyful, who had been to this, um, went to this family who had this camper and were living out of a camper. And so there was a lot of delight and surprises going on with this camper life. And I've, I've seen online that there are several people who do that kind of thing and spend a few years doing that. So what she says of this, a home can be a venue for daily experiences of surprise. It's inhabitants to regularly rediscover the joys of their own home. That to regularly rediscover the joys of your own home. Um, to me, you it's about, and here's another quote it from Creative Calling. It's about becoming more intentional about the way you work, creating space not only to work but to play, to think, and to dream. So he's talking about in a in a context of making a creative space to like a studio space, but this the idea is being intentional, intentionally creating the space you want, intentionally rediscovering um, your own home and, and putting surprises in. So, you know, we've been downstairs doing the videos and I, my, I was talking to my sister one night on video chat and and in the living room, my brother-in-law looks at it and he goes, what are you, are, are you in a box? <laughs> and I just thought it was funny. And I was like, no, this is our living room. And so today I thought, well, you know what? I like the background of this way better than I do our, our like the long, long living room. Not that that can't be that, but this is just a little more fun, a little more celebratory. And since it's my hundred days, I decided I'm celebrating cake, space. And, um, and this is up all the time because you know, when I said one special space, this is it for me. It's like fun and the colors are beautiful. And it just, it just, I, I just get a little excited when I'm in here and I'm not in here that much. It's usually in the morning routine, but it's a happy place. So, um, the, like I said, it doesn't need to be a showroom. It doesn't need to even be spotless or clean all the time. You just need one space. Here's some more research about the outdoors. And I want you to think about the outdoors, but that wouldn't it make sense about this comment if you brought some of the indoor inside. Um, it says, research has investigated the effect of surroundings of natural beauty on cognition. As it turns out, spending time in areas of beautiful scenery, such as the ocean, the woods, or the um, presence of a beautiful sunset releases um, <laughs> endogenous opiates that increase positive mood and decrease cognitive inhibition. You know, sometimes when you just like are talking, it's just like, uh. okay. The point of that is, is that when you're outside, you have this increase because of the beauty you're surrounded by. Duh. Now, what if you brought some of that beauty in? What, for me, it's flowers. I will buy flowers all the time. It is such an easy way to make your surroundings beautiful. And it can be plants, and, and I think it could be, I mean, I don't know, I have the research, but I think it could be anything beautiful that um, delights you as well, that can have the similar effects. So, um, for me, I, you don't even have to have a lot of flowers. I have these like little tiny, like quarter size in diameter, long, tall vases. And I have single ones. So I will buy a dozen roses or a dozen flowers and then put them all the way down my table and stick one in each one. 
So it, it just like, it just makes me happy. Every time I would walk in the room, it made me happy. It, and this is, and I just thought it was me, but in the book Joyful, it's, she said, Re flowers improve not only people's moods, but their memory as well. So there's benefits for flowers. So it's it, even, so, so if you feel like it's an extravagant, you can just say, I'm, I'm building my memory. I'm keeping my memory and making a better mood. So um, it really is true, people. I remember talking to a gal because I did a, a little class on, um, on things and I did that display of the single flowers. And she said, I never thought to buy myself flowers. And I'm like, yeah, do it. She goes, I always thought it was, you know, extravagant. And it, it's not. Um, and Alan doesn't really buy me flowers unless he's trying to apologize. <laughs> and so I think I've only got advice from him. Not that he never apologizes, but like a big deal apology. So, it's, so I've just always thought, you know, I don't need to wait for anybody to give me flowers. Um, you can surround yourself with anything you love. It can be anything. If you have a special, oh, Trisha's on, and Trisha and Koi both are firefighters. And when you walk into their house, they have these two glass cabinets on either side of an opening. And in the glass cabinets, I know at least one, I don't remember about the other, but I know at least the one, they have all this firefighter paraphernalia in it. And it's just something of who they are and how what they represent and the time that they've spent. And um, I'm sure it delights them in their memories and that sort of thing as well. So surround yourself with things you love. Not, there's... <sighs> Don't just settle for things. Don't just, don't do it. Settle, don't settle for that. Pick and be intentional. With, like that quote said, intentionally creating the area you're going to be in. So pick things you really have an affinity to. Um, Trisha says, and X is at the transom between the room. Yes, I remember that, that's true. So, and, and, and how do you feel about that, Trisha? Do you, what does it do for you? Um, while she's thinking about that and answering that. Between, not the crazy word. Uh, oh. Yeah, the transom. I think I understand. Uh, okay. Um, so, then the last tip on that about um, creating a place is to... Um, change it up. I mean, sometimes we, we see something so often we get bored with it. We stop seeing it. It stops delighting us. Um, unless we become very conscious and decide, I'm going to pay attention when I'm in the room. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to take a minute and smell the flowers. You know, unless we're doing that, oftentimes we can just like, you know, it, it's just habit. And so change it up. Change up the flowers, change up the thing you love, change up, you know, I used to have a holiday table. She said, Trisha said, it makes me happy. I can always use it if I need to. <laughs> That's true, Trisha. If, if you, yeah, you can just whip that stuff. Um, so I remember, what was I going to say? I remember, oh, for holidays. I mean, I didn't decorate, I mean, except for Christmas, I didn't decorate all around the house. Um, with eight, nine kids, you just, yeah, you just, I just couldn't. And when I was going to school, that was a whole nother thing. So what I would do is I would just, there was a table in our entryway and I would just decorate that area. So for me, when I walked into the house, it was like, oh, holiday fun. And it was a reminder and it was, it was fun for me. Um, so, you know, even something like that where you don't have to deck out the whole house and, but that you, you make it intentional and holidays are a good thing. I, I remember when I went back to school, I think I stopped decorating at like year two or three. And it was so funny because my husband would always kind of tease me about, well, you know, decorating because I would like go all out. At Christmas and he, then after I stopped doing it and he was like I really miss that you did that so he was enjoying the surroundings that I was creating for our family so um so look at your house 
Um, take a look at your, notice your surroundings. Get rid of stuff that doesn't, you know, I, what is that? Who is that gal that's doing all the, if it doesn't bring you joy, you know who I'm talking about. And I just forget her name. So anyways, yeah, be intentional about your, your space. And um, for me, the thought is, in, in, is that when you feel creative, when you feel happy in your own surroundings and you're surrounded on a regular basis, you're reminded of the beauty and of, of happiness and of lightness, that's who you're going to become. That's, that's one of the things that will help you to become that way. And then when you carry that out into the world, you start affecting people and you start um, having an influence on them because of the way you feel. And you know people that are full of life and energy and, and, and um, they affect you. And there's so much of life that can bring us down and it can be difficult that this is such an easy way to help ourselves want to balance those kinds of feelings and those kinds of experiences out. Because life is like this, it kind of goes back and forth. And so, you know, you have to intentionally sometimes help out your own environment to make it special. So, tip for today, make one special space. And that's our tip for our 100th video. And gonna celebrate, have my little cake. And, but you remember, Go out and buy a cake and celebrate with me, up together apart. <laughs> um, so remember, you have a creative heartbeat, so listen for it. And I will be back tomorrow on 101. Bye.